Well, welcome back then. Frame number seven. And uh, it's quite simple now, isn't it? Rianne Evans has to win the three remaining frames to knock out Zhu Yingwei. Zhu needs just one more. He's a very, very strong favourite now. One of four wildcard rounds. Uh, one, of, one of four wildcard matches, I should say, in this round. And well, we've seen glimpses of Rianne's ability, but we need to see plenty more of that now. It's a very attacking safety shot from Zhu Yingwei. Cue ball very nicely weighted there to the vault cushion. But also the reds have been opened up pretty menacingly. If a mistake is made here, then it could be end of match. Trying to just lie on that red that's near the pocket of Kamlukashin's getting behind it. Oh, that's unlucky oh. to hit the left part of the jaw. Goes back. there both players trying to get this ball put in the back in the right place I mean Zhu Yingwei is very entitled to oversee that because eventually he will be asked if he's happy with the positioning of the ball so he's entitled to have a look although <laughs> the ball's been moved over a lot from where it was initially the other thing to say here of course is that reds can be seen full on so contact she'll need to make before too long if it misses again it'll be a warning, but she hasn't missed again, so no, we we'll need to worry too much about that. Problem solved. Yeah, we don't have a Deshawat Pumjang scenario at the Crucible Theatre Sheffield where yeah. that precisely happened and he missed again, didn't he, the third time and had to lose the frame to Michael White. Yeah, which is something that happens probably you know, once every five years in snooker, someone loses a frame in that way, maybe less than that, but it's, it's a rare occurrence anyhow. Because basically, if you you get warned the third attempt, the only thing you're trying to do is hit a red. You would never just uh, play a thin contact. I don't don't suppose. I'm not sure what Pumjang was doing because I think he he's got his own way of playing the game, isn't he? He's a bit of a maverick. And uh, incidentally, he's been in action in this session and uh, had a win against Dominic Dale. So. That would have been entertaining. 5-1 it was as well. Two characters of the game, Let's, shall we say that? We've had Dominic on Eurosport a number of times. It's Two awesome. people that brighten up the game, up, in my opinion. Yeah, good win for Poom Jang. Started the season quite well after his uh, excellent run to Sheffield. Yeah, I think just briefly on, on the subject of Poom that watched the World Championships, remember his terrific win against... Steve Maguire, and then he got carried away, didn't he, in his next match? So playing to the crowd, he forgot what he was there for. I mean, I'm not saying they'd beaten Michael Watt anyway, but he was completely distracted by the attention he was getting. <laughs> he stopped playing snooker and started doing ridiculous things like giving away frames on the th three strikes and out rule and trying to get the crowd clapping. It was uh, it was just a case of somebody who lost their focus, I would say. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, Michael White certainly took advantage because he pounded him in that match. Yeah, that was over with a session to spare. But uh, certainly, as far as Poomjang is concerned, it, I suspect he'll do better this season. He'll get the balance right between entertaining and remembering what his uh, job is as a snooker professional. Now, Rianne with a mid-range red here. Position is the imponderable and... Uh, Oh, thinking about position perhaps is the reason she missed the pot.
So Shu's got in. Just needing one more frame. Just having a look at the top half of the draw here in Wuxi. Def defending champion Ricky Walden will be facing Jimmy White after this match. We've got uh, the likes of Graham Dotts, Robert Milkins, who's been playing very well. Mark Williams has a good record in China. Also, Stuart Bingham, who made the final here last year before losing to Ricky Walden. Ben Williston, a player certainly on the up. Michael White, as we mentioned. Barry Hawkins, I mean, he's been one of the players over the last few months. He's played very well in Bulgaria last weekend. Made the final of the World Championship. He's certainly a name to, to look out for. Marco Fu in there as well. And as I mentioned, Neil Roy faced the winner of Zhu Yinghui and Rian Evans. In the other part of the draw is Joe Perry, who probably deserves a mention, Tim, for winning the first Asian PTC event of the season. His first silverware in 22 years as a pro. That was... Um, well over at the weekend and good luck to him because uh, Joe's been a, a good player for a number of years and a lot of the British players making the journey to that event which preceded the action here in Wuxi. Yeah, Joe Perry, uh, as you said, has been on the circuit a long time and played really well, didn't he, in uh, winning just a, a couple of days ago. So he comes here in cherry ripe form, actually plays against a man who's been out of form Jamie Cope. You see this shot again off the blue. Yeah, I think he tried to come more to the left as we're looking down on the table into that red and get more into the bunch of reds than he has. Just back to Joe Perry, of course, he practices a lot with Neil Robertson, who uh, mm. will face the winner of this match, as I mentioned. And I know Neil has been very uh, thankful to all of Joe's uh, help over the years. Yeah, he's based in Cambridge. Joe, of course, originally from, from London. He used to play as a very young lad in the club in Ealing that I was involved in, with my dad. And he was coached by uh, my dad and a gentleman called John Patton, who used to run Saturday morning coaching. I didn't know that Joe was part of that until I played him in a tournament. But a few years later, he knocked me out because I was one of the, the lads who used to be in the club watching new practice. He was based in London then. But he moved down to that part of the world a few years later. Yeah. And so it's good to see him getting some success, actually. Like him. Yeah, I do as well. well at the moment, everything appears that Zhu Yingwei is going to get the result here. Although that safety shot from Rian Evans was of a high level. He's put the pressure on him. This is a difficult one at range. Yeah, not close. Hopefully, through Rian, this has offered a 